I don't know what was worse tonight, everyone. Uh, Wes Miller's coaching performance down the stretch or uh, Houdini in my performance today. Um, it's been brutal, to say the least. Tough down the stretch. Uh, Houdini, how are we feeling after that one? I'm going to be honest with you. I was trying to go full technician, get this show started. I didn't even get it started on time. I didn't watch the end of the game. I was going into this postgame show thinking Cincinnati won. I was ready. Then a friend, Connor Gilligan, texted me and said that was a disaster. I assumed he meant the broadcast was just shitty. No, it was the finish of that game. Uh, we're going to describe it in a second. Chatterbox Bearcats, everyone. Let's get into it right now. Uh, Houdini's off the screen right now. Kirby, if you can get him back on there running the singular. We're going to get this thing going, figure it out from here. Chuck and Houdini, shame on us. Shame on the Bearcats. That should have been back-to-back -to -back top 25 wins, and it was not. Here we go, everyone. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What the hell's going on? We lose Houdini. Um, let's, let's talk about this game. Let's start off with um, the shoe. Fifth Third Arena. It felt good, Hudson. It felt good tonight. Getting back to that type of atmosphere, game in and game out. I mean, that's the 25th team in the country. You're going to have the 11th team in the country coming up here soon. You're going to have the uh, 16th team in the country coming up soon. Houston, you know, top team in the country coming up here soon. You get everyone pretty much at home but Kansas, but it felt good to be back in that type of environment. Fans really showed out. Should have got a W at the end of that game. Let's start off with the good from that game, and there was a lot of good. It's not all doom and gloom. This postgame show is doom and gloom, but we'll figure it out. We got 20 minutes to go to get the people hooked, but um, not all doom and gloom. For 39 minutes, that was really fun. 39 minutes, 54 seconds. That was really fun. Give me your overall takeaway from the environment, opening Big 12 game at, at the shoe. Yeah, I mean, the place was rocking from everything I saw on TV and people in the group chat going nuts. Um, it was uh, it was rocking in there. It felt like the old school Bearcat days. And I could hear myself echoing. We're, we're having a Howard broadcast over here. I think me in the tunnel after BYU might have been better than what we're doing right now, but we're getting there, folks. Yeah, you were. Um, but no, it was. Yeah, I had, God forbid, I was celebrating a big win against BYU, and then they tore my heart out today against Texas. But, I mean, to your point, um, the game was great. Um, a lot of back and forth. We They started getting ahead of us a little bit in the, the first half. We battled back like we've been doing. Um, and then – crumbled really under the uh, at the stretch i mean very questionable i know we'll get into it questionable rotation moves from Wes. uh the end of the game was a disaster first off they traveled like six times in the last possession but um overall i think um there was a lot of good things that came from this i think our guys know that we can compete against really anybody in the big 12 right now so i think um, there's a lot of good things that came from this but we can't lose this game we deserve to win this game so I walked down into the basement with about 33 seconds to go, was plugging in all the cords, trying to get this broadcast ready. Still didn't get it ready in time. And I thought for sure I saw the red jerseys running around celebrating as if it was over. I guess what I saw was with seven seconds left, a foul or whatnot. Can you describe for the people that have may not seen the end of this game, and quite frankly, it's hard to find the highlights nowadays on YouTube, they're typically not showing these games on Sports Center until the you know the graveyard show or whatever because they're focused on Aaron Rodgers talk or whatever they're talking about right now on that that show. Um, describe to me what happened down the stretch. Who's at fault? Give me the uh, if I'm putting you into the analyst role and the analyst struggled today. He was calling Max Azmith. He was calling him uh, Azmith. I'm like, dude, he's one of the best players of the country. You don't even know his name. He called Bandago Bandiago. That's some Howard stuff right there. But uh, dissect the ending of it for me because I really want to know. I, I have no idea. Uh, probably a good thing that I have no idea, but just put something into my brain that makes me go to sleep disgusted. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to be disgusted because what happened at the end of the game, we were up. I'll just tell you the, the last couple of possessions. We were up one. They were pressuring the ball quite a bit. They fouled us a couple of times. Newman got into the bonus and missed the front end of a one and one I was also... Tell me if I'm wrong on that. I'm pretty positive that's what I was seeing, trying to figure out how to get this damn thing connected. Um, and then they went down. Uh, Texas did kind of in a scramble. 
and hit a fadeaway jumper in the corner, let's say. Um, traveled like three times before he even got there, but it rolled in. And then West, there was probably six or seven seconds left. Wes opted not to call a timeout. And then uh, CMOS launched a, what, a, a 35-footer contested, really had no chance of going in. And that's when the buzzer went. So I think a lot of people are pissed off, rightfully so. We didn't call a timeout. The free throw line killed us, dude. It felt like, I mean, it, I guess it really felt like old school UC basketball where we just missed half of our free throws. I don't know what the final uh, stat line 15. was, but it eight was of 15. eight of 15. I mean, it's going to be tough to win games uh, when you, you shoot 50% slightly better than me from the free throw line. And Newman missing that one at the end killed us. Um, I think after the, the initial basket when we started driving in transition you could tell we had nothing there I thought Wes should have taken a timeout right there with about four or five seconds left regrouped we had one to burn we can't take them with you when you leave Wes all right but overall turnovers and free throws man can't have that looking at the chat right now we got a Rodney Terry as Gus Fring he is Gus Fring the chicken man Rodney Terry the chicken man that's one thing we can smile about today um Let's get into some of the rotations. It's been a talking point all season. We got the Oguama sighting early. I guess that's Wes's thing. He puts Oguama in there, uh, maybe throws off the scouting report, sees if Odie's going to be a superstar. He's not. Takes him out. He doesn't play the rest of the game. But um, Jizzle James went out with, a, I think, eight minutes left, and you know Day Day played a five-minute stretch there when it felt like Jizzle was have, having it really going. Um, Aziz started the second half despite, I think, every Bearcats fan being able to point out the fact that this wasn't an Aziz-type game. This was a Jameel-type game. Jameel was putting it on. I went with Aziz too long there. Um, I'll have to make a decision when CJ, if CJ comes back, you know, what, what to do with Lacocious because I think CMOS needs to be on the floor for 32 minutes. But the uh, the day-day one, that's killing me. I think we need a, a ton more Jizzle James. I really like Josh Reed in there. Give me the, uh, the the stock up and the stock down on some of these players and who West should be playing right now. I, I don't think it's a genius to say this again. We love Day Day, but it it couldn't be clearer that uh, Jizzle James should be getting the, the lion's share of the point guard minutes. I, I honestly, I don't even know if it's defendable in any asset or any facet with I mean, Day Day today. I'm not going to knock a guy that's missing some shots that he probably can make, but He's, I think, one for 14 in the last two games with turnovers left and right. Um, he's undersized. He can't get to the rim. He he had some good uh, passes today. I'll give him that. But either way, he should be a guy that is giving Jizzle a break, not the other way around. I think it's it's malpractice, really, what we're seeing, where they're subbing him out in crucial moments. Wes actually went back to Jizzle, which I was about to break my TV. If he wasn't going to go back to Jizzle at the end of the game, I was going to lose my goddamn mind. Um he did, so I think maybe moving forward he'll figure that out. But, yeah, I think Day-Day stock is down. Again, like the guy. I, I don't see why Odie, when we have this many big guys to play around with, like you said, uh, if Aziz is having a big night, if Reynolds is having a big night, Vic seems to always be having a big night, we don't need to to waste a few minutes on Odie unless we're in foul trouble. Um, but I, I think everyone else, I mean, hell, I'm looking at the stat line. And just for I'll you guys at home, here. I actually got I'll, I'll jump in here. I got Chuck little... on the phone. That's how I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, literally, this is how Hudson's hearing me right now. Um, <laughs> so I'm hearing like six different things in my ears. I, honestly, you're putting together a pretty good broadcast. I told you one time I was doing Warriors finals uh, for CBS out in San Francisco, and it was like game five. And it was you, you think this is a tough broadcast and we're smooth sailing now. This is what professionals do. You know, the the first broadcast that we had um and thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we got like 70-something on the chat right now. Good to see you. But the first stream that we put out, it had just a waiting room of people ready to hear our thoughts, uh, ready to make some takes on Wes Miller, ready to make some takes on the Bearcats as a whole. And all they saw was a black screen, heard me talking, and, and just let out about seven explicitives, and then the stream ended 25 seconds in. So when we submit something for an Emmy at the end of this season, Hudson, it's not going to be the game that we do – against Houston live on the floor at Fifth Third Arena. It's going to be that 25-second show, just a, a masterpiece. Beat the creed by a mile there. But going back to the story here with the ADHD, I was doing the live broadcast with the uh, the earpods in, 
and some drunk dude that had shorts uh, up to his chest, you know, he was smoking a cigarette, threw the cigarette at me as I was getting the echo in the ear from the mix minus. So I could hear myself talking, threw a cig at me live on air, was, was calling me all sorts of names and thought he was going to come in and, and kick my ass. Oh, you're from the Bay Area. Screw you. I, I'm not from there. I'm from Cincinnati, baby. Go Bearcats. Long story short, Houdini, uh, it's good that you can hear me through the phone. Um, I, I still haven't hung up on you yet because I keep thinking that I'm going to do that at some point. Just click in because I got you on the phone right here. But let's run through the box score. That was a long weave into just well, Chuck, that the Bearcats lost. What's up? To answer your question, stock up. I, I think I texted you this. I think we found out one thing at least today, and it was kind of happened the last couple of games. Seamus Lacocious, he's the guy we got to run the offense through. Um, I know he, he, what, he had like 17 today. Um, but he's the clear guy, I think. He's smooth with the ball. He'll pass it when he needs to pass it. He'll put up shots like he did today when he needs to. But I think he's the clear guy you got to run the offense through. And then Jizzle on the side as well. Um, but I think it's clear as day. CMOS's team, brother. CMOS's team. I get it. Uh, Jimmy Dolan says, wow, flex on us here, Chuck. I just told you it was the worst broadcast of all time. Like, he threw the sig at me. It hit me. I <laughs> I panicked. It was terrible. So I'm not flexing on anyone right now. Uh, Bearcats not flexing on the Longhorns. 74-73, they lose it. Uh, my thoughts on this box score. Aziz had zero, had four rebounds and a steal. He was 0-3 shooting. Aziz is situational right now. He doesn't need to play 30 minutes every game. There should be games where he gets the lion's share of minutes over Aziz. I think it's usually pretty clear to tell early on, based on the other team's style of playing, who the center should be in that situation. You can weave them in and out here and there, but um, it was clear that Aziz wasn't going to have a big game through that first half and that uh, Jimmy o. Reynolds was. Victor Locken, his stock is is going up. He's been great all year, but he looks great in Big 12 play thus far and, and really has for 95% of the games this season. 17 points on 7-12 of 12 shooting. Missed a couple big threes there that really would have uh, extended the Cats' lead but great game from Locken as a whole. Newman, I'd say his stock's up. Kind of reminds me of Rashad Bishop, that lefty for the Cats that can defend, that's pretty long. Uh, a different style of player, but gives you that same attribute um, with the size and, and the just smooth way that he plays. Not great numbers, but five points, um, six rebounds, did have four turnovers in the game, just one of six shooting. But uh, still, you know, a mainstay that needs to see the floor. Simas, as you said, stock way up. He had 19 points on 7 of 10, 3 of 6 shooting. Day-Day Thomas, 2 points. We've mentioned it enough. No need to bury him. He's not playing good basketball right now. It should be Jizzle James that's your starting point guard. I don't know. I'm not the coach. I'm not the one making millions here. In fact, I'm doing a, a free podcast and a, uh, a rough job of it if uh, we're going off the uh, directing of it and the producing. Producing's good, actually, the directing. You're doing Camille great, Reynolds Chuck. You're doing great. Up. 11 points, five offensive rebounds. Five offensive rebounds, six as a whole. Also had a block. He's physical. He can finish in the paint. Good post moves. Play Jameel Reynolds more. Oguama had two points, whatever. Uh, Jizzle James, four points. Should have played more. Josh Reed, stock way up. Six points in the game on two or three shooting. I really like when Josh Reed's in a lineup. I think the team plays well. He defends, plays hard. Dan Skilling, seven points, three rebounds. Uh, had the big stretch with two dunks, one of them being incredible in the first half. Didn't hear much of his name aside from that, aside of 0 of 3 from 3. So um, there's your box score right there. Cincinnati falls to 12-3 and three on the season. Take the floor. Take the floor. Where do you want to go with? It's just it's just tough not to get a win there. I think they played well enough to win the turnovers again and the free throws. Um, but like we just said, there's a lot of good things coming. And, you know, you don't want to bury Day Day. I think he's a good player. I, I still like Jizzle at the crunch time moments. I'm hoping Wes is going to figure that out. Um, Jameel's – his kryptonite is his pivot foot. Have you noticed that? He travels, I swear to you, every time if they wanted to call it, they could call it travel. Every time he gets it, he is shuffling that pivot foot. Um, but overall, I mean, what do you think about shortening the rotation in general? We seem to play like we're like a, a I don't know, like a sixth grade basketball team where all 12 guys have to play a certain amount of minutes. And, it, and the difficult part there for Wes is we got a lot of guys that are similar. Like we were, you know, Josh Reed was was out, uh, what, three weeks ago? And now it's like, I mean, that guy, 
he's doing good stuff on the floor. So it's tough to take his minutes away. But where do you – do you think they should shrink the lineup, I guess? Because as you saw, Texas, they were only going seven or eight deep maybe uh, this game, yeah, and a lot we, of good teams it, do that. What, what would you we, think? We said it earlier in the season, Hudson. We, we, said what a, uh, we, we said what a great thing playing your best players would be. Seems like coaching 101, right? Play your best players. I think Jizzle James is better than Day-Day Thomas. Defensively, Day-Day may give you more. He's probably a better rebounder. Um, but I just I feel like better things happen when Jizzle has the ball in his hands than when Day-Day does. Simple as that. And, and defensively, I don't think it's um, that much of a difference to where y- you play Day-Day. And I know Wes is going maybe experience factors into that. Day-Day was playing Juco, completely different basketball game. Day-Day finishes those layups in Juco, has not been able to finish around the rim as of late. His mid-range game hasn't been working, hasn't even really attempted three-pointers. I think it's a no-brainer. That's the biggest rotational change you have to make. I think Josh Reed is pretty good. A lot of people may disagree with me. We said at the beginning of the year, Josh Reed just kind of soaks up minutes and takes up space. He does it pretty well. Soaks up minutes pretty well, I'd say. Um, Plays good defense and always brings some energy when he's in the game. We don't need to see any Odio Guama, and that's with all due respect to Odio Guama. This is just a deeper team than it was last year. I don't care what he did last year. I don't care that Wes invited him to Big 12 Media Day to represent the Cats. There's just better guys to play right now. Unless, you know, a couple centers are in foul trouble. He's a great asset to have in that situation. Great teammate. But right now, there's just better guys in front of him. Um, and then aside from that, those are the two really big ones. And then just figuring out whether it's Aziz or whether it's um, Jamil earlier in the game based off how the other team looks. And really, you should know that in the scouting report going in. Like, this player is going to work better than, than that player. And I think the, the majority of times it's going to be Jamil Reynolds to where he may get that nod at some point. I know I said Aziz last game were creatures of recency bias, to say the least. Yeah. And uh, Aziz looked really good against BYU throw some bigger bodies out there that are a little more physical, it's going to be Jameel. It's a good problem to have, but those are the two big ones right there is uh, Jizzle James for sure and uh, a little more J- Jameel Reynolds a little quicker into halves. You know, you don't need a sub minute 10 minutes, Wes. You know, put them in there at the first TV timeout, if anything. Right, right. And I, I mean – to Wes's credit, I don't think anybody anticipated Dylan DeSue to turn into Jason Tatum today. I mean, he was – that had to have been a career high when he put up 33. But for the love of God, we got to adjust on that that pick and pop. We were giving him – he had four threes. Um, he actually got a little cold at the end, but at one point I think he was like four for seven from three, ended up four of ten. Um, but at some point you got to adjust. I know that wasn't in the scouting report for him to just be a dead-eye shooter, but – I think our defense killed us in spots, but again, the game was was in front of us. I mean, we just kind of blew it, and that one hurts because I think Texas is going to end up being probably like all these damn Big 12 teams. We're not in the American anymore, Chuck. I guess that's what I'm realizing. When you have one of these slip away, it hurts a little bit more because we starting out 2-0 and in the Big 12, man, that would have been something special. Um, we still got what? It doesn't matter. We got Baylor on Saturday, so we better <laughs> – figure it out and get over it um, here in the next few days. We've got another legitimate squad that we got to play on the road uh, on Saturday. So you got to protect your home floor, man. That was um, in the latter stages of the Mick era. Of course, in the Huggy era, that was what UC did, man. We won games at fifth third. We came accustomed to it in the last couple of years, whether it was Memphis, whether it was Houston coming in, lost some games to, I think they lost a game to Temple in there. Definitely lost a game to UCF, Cumberland's senior year. So, I mean, they, they just they, – they've lost too many games at Fifth Third Arena, and I know Texas is good, but like you said, you, you got to factor in home court there down the stretch. you got to close out that game. They were up three with, what, a minute left? Like, they, they had every opportunity to finish Texas off there. They couldn't do it, and it is frustrating. But when it comes to the NCAA tournament chances, Texas is a good team. If you lose to good teams, the committee doesn't give a shit. Like, at this point, you know it. They don't care. They don't care who you lose to if they're good teams. All they care is how many top 50 teams in the net you can beat, how many road wins you sneak out. So, plenty more opportunities. Just win some games. But you got to protect your home floor. They didn't do it tonight. Uh, Answering a few viewer questions. 
Coaching 101, Chuck, thank you. Uh, but honestly, 90% of coaching is identifying talent. Wes has done a good job of that. He's got a good roster right now. Um, another one from Jimmy. Would Carl Kramer be playing Day-Day Thomas or Jizzle James? Shout-out Moeller head coach Carl Kramer. He'd be playing Jizzle James. There's a reason why Kramer's won, what, five, six state titles? There's a reason why he's producing NBA players. He'd be starting Jizzle James. Um, actually, he wouldn't because – Muller doesn't start freshman. He Jizzle would be on the freshman team being a baller right now. But um, anyways, that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, the Big 12 as a whole, we're going to go around the Big 12, but I wanted to start with this. And, chat, you could disagree with me if you want to. I think the Big 12 is better than the old Big East that UC used to play in. And I only say that because in there there were games sandwiched with Rutgers, with DePaul, with – um, South Florida, St. John's, and Seton Hall were usually typically decent during those teams. So there could be a two, three-game stretch where it was in. This Big 12, I mean, granted, West Virginia is extremely down this year, but you would expect they'll be back eventually. It's literally just UCF. It's just UCF that stinks. Tonight's scores, Iowa State stuns Houston 57-53, Kansas State 81, West Virginia 67. West Virginia stinks. Texas Tech 60, Oklahoma State 41 in the second half. Oklahoma State may be one of those bye games. They do not look great this year. Baylor 24, BYU 22. So, hey, the, the transitive property here, BYU is holding their own in the first half with Baylor in, in that one. So, um, overall thoughts on, on the Big 12 as compared to the Big East. What's better? Well, I'm probably recency bias is going to take over on this one, but I'm I'm taking the the current Big Twelve. Um, I just don't know if I felt a lot of times the Big East just felt like it was um, just you knew you were just going to get pummeled. It felt like back in the day, like the Pistons playing the Knicks every day, like you were going to get your ass beat and you're going to be on the ground. People are going to be hurt almost every game. I don't know if the skill level was at the level that the Big Twelve is top to bottom. I mean, you said UCF. I think they've lost like four games this year. No no great wins or anything like that, but there's maybe two bye games in this entire conference. We had more than that. I mean, back in the the, the Big East era, we had, a, like you said, the Rutgers, the DePauls of the world, um, where we were having bye games. I, you're telling me that West Virginia is going to be an easy win? I've, I don't, I'm not so sure. They got a guy out. Their big guy's still out that he'll be coming back and that uh, Kerr, Chris, uh, whatever the hell his name is, came back recently. So I don't think there's any the single buy game in this entire conference. So I think we got our work cut out for us. But I'll take I'll take this current construction of the Big 12 over pretty much any basketball conference I've ever seen. All right, so we're going um, down a list of takes that I had, and then we'll get into the, uh, the, the next game up on the schedule. Uh, here's what I wrote down during the game. You kind of give me your thoughts as we uh, round out this show. First of all, Who's UC's closer on this team? I think it varies game by game. I would think it's one of the bigs, and it's obviously not Bandago or Guama. I would think it's, like, tonight, I would have given the ball to Reynolds as much as possible. Good things seem to have happened when you got on the ball. Can clearly create his own shot on the post. Can pass out of the post. I like the ball going down there or going down low to lock in. And then if you're going with a guard to create, probably Seamoss, right? You're putting the ball in Seamoss's hands and hoping that he can make the right play. Um, but I don't think there's any clear cut, like, it doesn't matter how the other team's playing. Like, a Sean Kilpatrick, you're giving him the ball, and he's going to figure it out. With this team, I think, you know, you play inside out. You give it down to one of the bigs, and you run the offense that way. But um, another thing that I had to say, the, the free throws, like we've mentioned, a, a very bad free throw shooting team. They went 8 of 15 at home. Wes, in the postgame press conference, said, it's not the reason they lost the game. Free throws. Thoughts on that comment? So, as far as who I want the ball at the end of the game, kind of our closer, I still think, like I said at the beginning, Seamoss, because I think you need a guard at least. He doesn't need to shoot it, but even entry passes to the big men. We struggle with post-entry passes. Uh, that's like 101 basketball. Um, we struggle with that mightily and get a lot of turnovers trying to force it in there. Um but it was the last thing you said what Wes said that we didn't lose because of free throws? Yeah. Is that what you mentioned? Well, I, I mean, I'm not a mathematician, Chuck, but just looking at the damn score and how many free throws we missed, I'm going to say that's why we lost the game. 
uh, that and turnovers. I don't. I would. I would love to hear what he said. The real reason they lost the def- defense, giving up. You know, thirty three to Desue. You can't yeah. miss half your free throws. You just can't do it. No, and a story. A star man, Dylan Desue. I know the numbers don't reflect it, but he had some throwdowns that I was like, damn, that's a grown man could step out and hit the three. He was uh, probably the best player on the floor tonight, I would say. Uh, Steve Ross, problem with closing with Reynolds is he cannot make free throws. That's a good point. Um, But who can make free throws on the team? I mean, who do you feel comfortable shooting at the line? Reynolds was one of three. Uh, Lockin was two of five. Bandago missed his only free throw. So, Yeah, I I mean, that's why you typically want to go with a guard at the end of games, unless you you got a big that's skilled and can knock down free throws. But – Sometimes it looks sounds like everybody misses on our team. Doesn't matter if you're a guard or a big. Yeah, and I'm talking down the stretch, not in this game, just in a hypothetical game where it's the last possession of the game and you need a bucket. I'm I'm thinking you close out with Reynolds that way. In this particular situation, I I could see why you mix it up. But um, another topic I had was the bench warmers too, not starring Rob Schneider, John Heater, and our guy Sean Salisbury but starring everyone off the bench today. The Cats combined for 17, 23, 30 points off the bench today. So we talked about how deep this team is. Didn't even have C.J. Frederick. Who knows where he fits in when he comes back because CMOS, you know, we don't want anyone taking his minutes right now. But um, the, the bench was great. The shooting, great. 29 to 61, 47%. Cats were 7 to 17 from deep. They out-rebounded Texas by 6. They turned it over. Four more times than Texas and missed all the free throws, as I mentioned. That's the difference in your game because Cincinnati won every single statistic aside from that, and they had the uh, the home court advantage. The difference in the game was no doubt the uh, free throws and the turnovers. So that's kind of where I'm going with yeah. there. The platooning bigs um, with uh, Reynolds and Aziz, we talked about it. You play the one that makes sense in that game. And then uh, aside from that, that's that's really all I got from this one. We're on to Baylor. Uh, the Baylor Bears up next. That game is in Waco, Texas on Saturday. It's a um, 8 p.m. start, I believe. Kirby's going to throw up the graphic here in a second. But your overall thought on the uh, Baylor Bears as we just go from top 25, top 25 to another top 25 team. I'll tell you what I'm going to do when we hop off this. I'll, I'll watch uh, Baylor and BYU wrap up. Um, it's still it's still an absolute crime to humanity. They put us on uh, ESPN Plus again, for the love of God. We're playing Texas. We just beat uh, the twelfth ranked team in the country on the road. Can you throw us a bone and just get me on freaking regular national TV? First for ever the love Big of Twelve God. game. I, I mean, first ever Big Twelve game, and instead they show us Kentucky, Missouri, and I get it. If KSR was having a post game show right now, there'd be seventy thousand people on there. Um, they, they bleed blue. We bleed red. You know, Cats have a big fan base, too. Bigger game. Missouri stinks. They were 8-6 and six heading into the game. I don't like the programming. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, uh, that's way above my pay grade. But, uh, yeah, Baylor, ESPN Plus, too. Yeah, no, it's, it's disgusting. But, yeah, we'll see who wins this game. Um, I don't know if we actually – if it really matters for UC who's going to win this game. We beat BYU and we're going to have to play Baylor. So, um, I, I think we're probably going to have to I, – I, full disclosure, I've seen Baylor play like two games. Um, I have a feeling we're going to have to probably go a little smaller than Wes typically likes to. Um, most of their, their guys are a little bit smaller and quicker shooting threes, kind of like the, the Baylor national championship team from a while ago. Um, so I'll be interested to see what happens. Um, I'm, I bet your ass Wes is watching the end of this game as well. I'm sure they've been scouting them quite a bit. But you just got to hope that we base our rotation based on the team we're playing. It seems like sometimes Wes just has his cookie-cutter rotation regardless of what's happening and makes sure he subs his guys in. And it's like we got to get the flow of the game going, man, you know? And you got to give – don't want to bury Wes. I mean, he's he's done well. I mean, they beat BYU. They should have beat Texas. We're on the right track, but I think that's where we can get that extra inch to win these types of games. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, game the interest, frustrating Chuck. thing is since he played well, man, had a big crowd behind him, and they played well. They shot it great from the floor, out-rebounded Texas, got 
career game from CMOS. You know, I mean, he had better games at Butler, but I mean, for the Cats, seven of ten, three of six from deep. Lockin played outstanding. Um, overall, like UC played a pretty good game. Should have won that game. Didn't close it out down the stretch. But I'll say this: through two Big Twelve games, I think we can hang, man. I don't think this is a team that's going to go four and fourteen like some people thought. I think this is a team that's going to compete. I think they're going to compete in a lot of these games. Maybe we go into Waco and lose by 26 and uh, our tune changes a little bit. But um, I, I think this team can uh, compete with the majority of teams in the conference this year, and that's exciting. It means Wes has the team on the right track because, quite frankly, Coach Frank, it's, excuse me, John Brannon and um, Wes's first couple of years, when they played in the lead team from the American or a team that was better than them, they typically lost and didn't compete in a lot of those games. So on the right track, man, jerseys were awesome. Fan base is awesome. The chat yeah. was great tonight. Overall. Breaking news, Chuck. The game Saturday is actually on ESPN. Regular ESPN, breaking news from Chatterbox Admin. Um, we're not going to be on Peacock, ESPN Plus, any of the above, ESPN Saturday. We'll take that. That's where you know the, the tide is turning. Cats, Baylor, Saturday, postgame show right here after. Quite frankly, this, this isn't Chatterbox Reds, folks. It's uh, it's completely different operation. I know that they get it going during the ninth inning. It's tough because I don't have the TV down here. I'm trying to get the phone set up, everything like that. I want to watch the end of the game. Come on, guys. I'm a fan. I didn't even get to watch the end today. I had to have Houdini uh, you know, go Picasso for me and paint a picture of how it ended. I still don't know. All I know is that someone hit a, uh, a baseline jumper for Texas. I think it was A-Smith as uh, the, the color commentator was saying all game. But uh, I, I don't even know. I'll have to uh, wait until about 4 a.m. for Sports Center to play one of those in the E block. But um, Baylor, man, the Bears are legit. This is fun. Day in and day out, Cincinnati gets to do it. So Saturday, we'll see you then um, on time. That's our goal. That's our goal. <laughs> With uh, the under four minute TV timeout, that's going to be the goal moving forward, Houdini. That way, if we set it for the under four TV timeout, maybe we'll get it thirty seconds after tip off instead of a five minute delay, a twenty second show of me just yelling "fa," and then uh, this broadcast, which has actually been smooth despite you being over the phone. Honey, hey, we're good still stuff. on, yeah. Kirby, thanks for running the graphics behind the scene. I'll give you one final thought before I. Uh, Tease our show, The Chatter, which is also on Chatterbox Sports. You can uh, stream the uh, show or, or listen to the uh, the podcast version wherever you get your podcast app. But final thoughts for the faithful tonight after a 74-73 loss. He's got nothing for me. I don't think he heard me over the phone. All right, see you, everyone. What if I told you? God bless. I, we're back. Here we go. We're going to do this again. We're gonna Hold on. I heard you again. You want my final thoughts? It, it, yeah. Give me, you may <laughs> this as well. is beautiful. This, this worked out perfectly. This is All our, right. Yeah. Uh, final thoughts. Show. It took like 40 seconds, apparently, for me to actually hear what Chuck just said there. Um, final thoughts. I think, you know, glass half full, right? I, I think we saw a lot of good things. Brutal loss. But the arena was – it felt like the old days – the, the, the Cincinnati jerseys, we were playing like old Cats basketball teams, out-rebounding, out-toughing people. I think uh, we're, we're heading in the right direction. So I'm excited. All it takes is 9-9 nine and nine to get into the big dance, man. That's the goal. So we'll leave you with that. We'll leave you with that, and we'll leave you uh, with take two. It's always take two now of this uh, chatter intro. Subscribe to the show right now, wherever you get your podcast app, and listen to Houdini and myself, not on a live broadcast where we can't be late, and we uh, can't have 20 seconds of darkness. All right, everyone. Fire the creed off. See ya. What if I told you that no two paths are ever the same? That different roads oftentimes lead to the spot where it all began? What if I told you two childhood friends came together to take over the podcast world? Where's my snare? should not be in the tournament. Hey, everybody. How are you? Chuck Walter here. This sweatshirt's getting a little hot in here. It's sorry about it, Pittsburgh. Better luck tomorrow. Cincinnati, how are we doing tonight? The only thing on my mind this year 
get back to the state championship and smoking as much resin as I possibly can with my buddies. It's the Skyline Chili Eating Duo you love. Oh, sweet heavens. Back in action. This is The Chatter.